Did you buy a Dell XPS 9520 thinking you'd get some decent gaming performance out of it? Noticed your frame rate falling through the floor after only a few minutes of gameplay? No worries. I'm Pat, this is Nuclear Notebook, and in this video I'll show you everything you need to do to stop your XPS throttling. This video is divided into four main sections. I recommend watching the first three in their entirety. You'll need to download a copy of Throttle Stop to carry out the steps to control power throttling. There's a link in the description below, and please note that Throttle Stop settings are reset when the system's power cycled, so you will need to reopen the app after starting the system up to make sure they're applied. Alternatively, you can set up Task Scheduler to automatically run the program on login. Firstly, a quick warning. The XPS 9520 has introduced a sheet of plastic sandwiched between the heatsink assembly and the motherboard. Based on my own testing, this is a thermal insulator which has most likely been placed there to reduce the temperature of the bottom case by a few degrees. This could have been okay, except as you can see here, the plastic is actually directly covering the MOSFETs for the CPU and GPU voltage regulators. On my unit, it had even pushed the thermal pad for the GPU MOSFETs up and away from what it was supposed to be cooling. Not good. These thermal pads on the rear of the cooler are supposed to be making direct, uninterrupted contact with the parts they're intended to cool. Dell's decision to shove an insulating layer in between is bafflingly ill-advised, but with the standard heavy power throttling behavior intact, it's still likely that MOSFET temperatures are remaining within their rated limits. I'm not necessarily going to recommend tearing your brand new computer apart just to remove this plastic, but I will warn you that I don't know what the long-term effects of running the CPU and GPU at full wattage will be on those MOSFETs with the plastic still in place. It is, however, completely fair to assume that it won't be good for them. Please keep in mind that I've removed the plastic from this XPS and repasted the chips with Cryonaut before making any changes to the behavior of the power delivery. With that out of the way, let's press on. The first and most important thing you need to know is that the XPS cannot adequately cool itself while sitting flat on a hard or soft surface. The GPU is set to start thermal throttling at only 74 degrees, so even after following all the steps in this video, you'll see the RTX 3050 throttling like crazy almost immediately if the laptop isn't elevated on a ventilated stand or cooling pad. A fairly unusual feature in many of Dell's products is motion-based power throttling. This uses an accelerometer embedded in the Intel chipset to tell the machine when it's been picked up or moved, and a hard power throttle will kick in on both the CPU and GPU which can take quite a while to go away. Here's the XPS running a game. You can see we're not currently being throttled. Now watch what happens when I jiggle the laptop a little. If you're trying to game on your lap, this will really get on your nerves. To sort this out, head into Device Manager. Expand the subsection called System Devices. Now locate Intel Integrated Sensor Solution. Right click on this, then click on Disable Device. When prompted, click on Yes. It's best to restart the computer now just to make sure this takes effect. Right, let's tackle that power throttling. First up, we're going to get the power delivery under control while keeping temperatures as low as possible. Please use this method if you haven't removed the insulating plastic from under your heatsink assembly. As you may be aware, these systems feature NVIDIA Dynamic Boost which shifts power from the CPU over to the GPU depending on the load. We're going to disable this feature to lock the graphics chip at 35 watts of power down from the maximum of 45 watts it'll use from the factory. The effect on temperatures is significant. Jump back into Device Manager. Open the subsection called Software Devices. Look for NVIDIA Platform Controllers and Framework. Right click on this, then click Disable Device. Click Yes when prompted. You won't need to restart the computer for this to take effect, so we'll move on to the next step. Now open up Throttle Stop. Just click OK to shoo this warning away. From this window, click on the button labeled TPL towards the bottom right. You'll see the Turbo Power Limits window appear. First, uncheck the checkbox next to Disable Controls. Change the number next to Long Power PL1 to 35. This will force your processor to stay at or below 35 watts under long workloads. You might also want to reduce Short Power PL2 to somewhere around 65 watts. This will keep temperatures more under control during a shorter workload. Now click on the checkbox labeled lock on the right, then hit apply. Jumping into Cyberpunk 2077 with graphics set to low preset at 1080p, you'll now see we're running at around 60 frames per second with both the CPU and GPU happily sitting at 35 watts each and core temperatures at around 75 degrees and 67 degrees respectively. While the system's no powerhouse in this state, you'll now get this solid level of performance and temperature control consistently for hours of gameplay with absolutely no throttling. 
Now, if you've removed that plastic from the cooler and you're running this system in a fairly low temperature environment, you might want to turn things up as far as the cooling system can handle. This guide assumes that you have not carried out any steps from section 4A. We can set the system to run at a combined load of about 85 watts shared between the CPU and GPU without power throttling. Please note that you might see some thermal throttling on the GPU since it can occasionally bump into its 74 degree throttling limit with this setup. Firstly, open up throttle stop. Click OK at the warning. From this window, click on the button labeled TPL towards the bottom right. You'll see the turbo power limits window appear. First, uncheck the checkbox next to disable controls. Change the number next to long power PL1 to 45. This will force your processor to stay at or below 45 watts under long workloads. You might want to also reduce short power PL2 to somewhere around 65 to 75 watts. This will keep temperatures more under control doing a shorter workload. Now, click the checkbox labeled lock on the right. Additionally, since we're going to be running this system fairly hard, which will prompt Dell's proprietary power control firmware to intervene, you'll need to click on the lock button to the right of MMIO up the top. Now click apply and we're done. Jumping back into Cyberpunk with the graphics set to low at 1080p, you'll see the results here. Nvidia Dynamic Boost has pulled CPU power back to 40 watts in order to provide 45 to the RTX 3050 Ti, and temperatures are holding where you'd expect to see them in a normal gaming laptop, around 80 on the CPU and between 72 and 74 on the GPU. The system will remain in this state indefinitely. If the GPU does hit 74 degrees, it usually won't need to throttle any lower than about 40 watts to stabilize its temperature. If you are having issues with the GPU thermal throttling too much, try backing the CPU PL1 power off by about another 5 watts in throttle stop. So there you have it. We've successfully turned the XPS 15 into a reasonably capable gaming machine. Let me know in the comments section if this video helped you out or if you get stuck or have any problems. Now if you haven't bought one of these machines yet, I'll have a full review of this one up by the 30th of July so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, stay safe and thanks very much for watching.